What's up, everyone? This is Angelo coming at you with episode 214 of Spinning Thoughts. We have premiere episodes every Thursday at midnight Eastern on Adobe Radio. The video podcast drops at noon Eastern the same day, and the audio hits all platforms on Mondays. We're on all social media at Spin Thoughts. Our website is thespinningthoughts.com. And if you're watching this video on YouTube, give it a like. Make sure you're subscribed. We're trying to build the channel so we can keep doing all this video content for you. Now, I'm really, really excited and energetic, maybe more than normal, and it's for two reasons. One, uh, if you can't tell, it's that time of year where Hawaiian shirts are acceptable uh, by more people. I wish I could wear them all year round, but now is the time for me to shine. I went with fish, and I'll jump into the florals soon, but FYI, moving forward on the podcast, it's band tees and it's Hawaiian shirts, so hope you're cool with that. If not, then just listen to the podcast. It's available to stream everywhere, and um, we'll all be happy then, and the second reason, the biggest reason is I'm just so excited for my guest, DJ from Clever Girls. I've been working with them to come on the show for a couple weeks to talk about Constellations, the new album that's about to drop, and by the time you're seeing this, maybe it has dropped. Uh, It's March the 26 via egg hunt records it's behind me somewhere and it's just such an amazing album it is so dynamic it will take you on a journey and I have listened to it maybe eight times and I keep finding things to love about it DJ and I are going to talk all about constellations and pressing vinyl which uh, they brought a really interesting perspective that I hadn't heard from a guest yet on the show and what our hopes are maybe for the music community moving uh, into 2021 and the future beyond that Uh, music videos uh, there's a lot that we're going to be talking about so let's dive right in right now this is my conversation with DJ from Clever Girls. All right, everybody, I am thrilled, as always, to invite my next guest. This is episode 214, and we're in March, about to be in April. There is so much to be excited about. I am thrilled to have my guest, DJ from Clever Girls. DJ, how's it going? It's so good. Thank you for having me. (laughs) What an exciting time for you and Clever Girls. You and I, we've been talking for a couple weeks to get this lined up. And I'm so thrilled that we were able to get this. I have been um, thoroughly obsessed with Clever Girls and the release that we're going to talk so much about Constellations. But DJ, before we dive into this exciting release, it's coming up here very, very quickly. uh, Give me a little bit of a brief story of Clever Girls for anybody who is maybe newer to the band. How did you all get to this point or you get to this point just days away from releasing the sophomore LP Constellations? Um, Yeah, so our band, we've been a band, it feels like for a decade, but we've actually only been a band for like three and a half or four years. Um, I met uh, my drummer on Craigslist, which is adorable and like just so cute um so i moved to vermont wanted to start making music i had no idea like how to start a band i didn't know like what the etiquette was i didn't know who to reach out to because i was in a new area so i just put an ad out on craigslist rob hit me up um and he is also a songwriter so we started working on his songs then we changed into working on our songs and slowly but surely i got connected with the rest of the band through him Um, and yeah, I mean, three and a half years later, that brings us to present. Um, and we are putting out this record next, or I guess this week, which I'm so thrilled about. Um, and it's been, it's been a wild ride for sure. (laughs) Yeah. I, I, when it comes to the band dynamic, I mean, is it a solid lineup? I was, I was trying to figure it out and, and, and I really couldn't pinpoint it. So it is a solid group of individuals. It is super solid. Like I, like, I think so i think there's there's so many cool things about our band but one of them is that like if any of us weren't in it it wouldn't it wouldn't be clever girls like it it wouldn't be the same like we all contribute so much it's such a collaborative effort um and while i write like the lyrics and, and like most of like the basic fundamental songwriting parts like everybody is so responsible for how the songs come together and and how they materialize and how they're produced and all of it so Um, We've had the same lineup for the entire time, which is like wild and such a privilege and uh, one of my favorite parts about being in the band. So 
that's that's amazing. You know, as I was doing my research, I was looking at different videos, trying to figure it out. I mean, there's you never know here. It's great to see, though, that it is a solid dynamic of, of individuals that are contributing. And and wow, like what a dynamic uh, all of you are. Uh, there's four of you, then, correct? <laughs> yeah. yeah, there are four of us. Wow. I mean, this is by far. So now that I have that clarity of who's like truly, truly involved in the madness here, the thing that caught my attention about Clever Girls, the really first and still the most is the diversity of sounds that I get in all of your songs. Uh, for example, on Constellations, I was really blown away by Woman. You and I were talking a little bit before we started taping. That song just really is wild. The guitar solo. Yeah. Will catch you off guard every damn time you listen to it. It's so, absolutely, so good. Absolutely. Uh, and that solo was tracked like so many different times. through, And like we used so many different tools to get those sounds. And, and uh, it's so funny because you're like probably the third or fourth person who's had like a full length full listen to the whole record who has been like that part it just like because it just really jumps out at you it's like so it's so angular and so weird compared to like the rest of the album too so I love that you picked up on it yeah and it's like you literally I, I my first listen through I just had it on the background I have a, a way that I listen to stuff right you know the first time like you let it play then you dive in a little bit deeper but like I stopped breathing and I stopped what <laughs> I was doing when that solo came in I can't wait because this is not a song that's released yet so I can't wait for everybody to hear woman when it does drop and just get ready even if you're not paying attention it's gonna catch you off guard <laughs> In all the best ways. But, you know, um, the, that's just one example on Constellations. But overall, like your your music is just very dynamic. It's um, very like dreamy. It feels intentional, but loose in interpretation. Sometimes it, it really does offer a lot. So, you, you know, you mentioned the diversity of just like the influence that the other members of the band have. I mean, what the hell kind of influences do you guys even have to to make this kind of sound? It's it's dynamic as hell. Oh my gosh, I don't even know. So it's kind of embarrassing because like, I feel as though we, we spent such a long time recording this album and, and like in general as a band, we have like a pretty diverse set of influences. Like the people, like the songwriters and musicians who influence like my drummer are completely different from me or completely different from Winfield, our guitar, guitar player or Toby, our bassist. So, I mean, just super, super, um, like different answers to that question depending on who you ask for me like when i was listening to the or when i was recording this record like my number one album i was listening to was probably all mirrors by angel olsen or um be the cowboy by mitski like those were just like the two big names that i was like i had their records on repeat and i think on both of those albums you just hear such um like technically perfected production. And so that is like, like everything on this album was like put under a microscope time and time and time again. And, and, and so that's where my focus was, I think a lot of the time. Um, but then in terms of like sonically, like if you were to ask each of us, you'd, you'd get a different answer. <laughs> so <laughs> Maybe for uh, the next time, uh, we'll bring right. more on to the show and we'll ask individually. Um, now, the Constellations, it's due for release to give it the proper introduction that it deserves. It is due for release on Friday, March the 26th via Egg Hunt Records. Mm -hmm. uh, now, a few of these tracks have uh, on the album have been floating around for a little while, and that's not uncommon for any band to do that. Um, from what I understand, Constellations was actually written on the heels of your debut full-length uh, album, Luck. Can you mm -hmm. talk to me more about this journey that it really feels like you've been on writing these songs uh, that are found on Constellation and how it became this impressive full length? Absolutely. So uh, Luck, our debut album, came out in April of 2018. And in May of 2018, no, let me think. Yeah, I'm pretty sure it was in May of 2000. Oh my God, that's so crazy. Yeah, in May of 2018, ago we went back to the studio like so like luck came out in april and in may we were back in the studio just kind of doing like a little bit of pre-production but mostly kind of like scrapping songs together loosely and then by 2019 we were like in full swing like in the production of this album so like i was kind of writing and um developing these songs like 
throughout 2018, 2019, 2020. Like by the time 2020 hit, we were pretty much done recording and ready to release it. uh, And then COVID happened. So this record has really been done for quite a long time. It's been in the works for quite a long time. And when we started releasing the singles, the sort of like loose plan was to release it last summer, almost a year ago. And then, you know, things just didn't work out. Like morale was super low. Obviously COVID happened. We were hoping to tour in support of it and none of those things were able to materialize. So this is the new revised plan was, you know, we'll just, we'll just put it out and, um, and stand by it. And uh, yeah, we're, we were just ready. So (laughs) What is the general writing process for you? You mentioned that, you, you know, you, you kind of dive into the lyrics a, a lot, maybe some of the broad foundational songwriting. I find this to just be such an intriguing aspect of every band because every band has similar elements, but then very different. Some are just like, I've never even heard that before. Mm-hmm. I mean, what is your process and was it any different for Constellation? It seems like it could have been because of the length, like that it spans. I mean, what's it been like to write it? Um, I, I or what's the process to write for you is the question. Um, yeah, that's a great question for me. Like I will either write a song in like under 10 minutes or it'll take me like months. There's like, there's like no medium there. It's like either I like kind of like vomited it all out or like I'll have something that I keep revisiting over and over again. And like, if you were to go through my cell phone, I'd have like voice memos of like certain lines or certain hooks or whatever um, over like a million different chords or, or melodies or, or whatever. So it's really like one or the other. And then when I bring it to the band, what I usually do is I bring it to like one or two people first and sort of like write it out with one person. So like just last week, Winfield, my guitar player and I got together and we were just like messing around on, on synthesizers and guitar just for like a couple hours, kind of fleshing out some new ideas. Um, And that's sort of how we decide whether or not something is going to like fit as a clever girl song is like, if we can write it and if we can take it on this band and kind of like, if we can figure it out, because once I bring like kind of like these foundations to the band, like the new music actually comes together usually pretty quickly in terms of like a general idea of what we want to do. And if it doesn't, it usually means it's just like not worth pursuing. Um, There's never something that takes like, you know, days or weeks to unlock as a band. Like we always are able to like find our stride with these things pretty quickly. Um, And if we don't, it's usually a sign that it's like not meant to be and we just toss it or scrap it or whatever. Hey, I love it. There's not enough time uh, on this rock, you know, to be spending it on something that may, maybe it's not going somewhere. Move on to something else. I love that. I could actually, you know, take some of that advice myself. uh, And I'm sure a lot of other people could too. Um, DJ, what song, uh, it's kind of like a very broad, hard question, I guess, but what song are you most proud of? Not your favorite. I feel like those are two different things. Um, To be more specific, like, maybe one that pushed you as an artist a little bit more or really like sometimes artists hit these plateaus and then there's like that song that either pushes the album forward. Uh, Maybe there's one where you're just utterly, utterly personal in it. Anything like that that you're just very proud of? Yeah. I'm so glad you asked this. Fried for me is like my tune. This song like meant a lot to me when I wrote it and it was And then this doesn't happen to me a lot at all. Like it was a song where like when I turned it over to the band, I was kind of like, oh, okay, well, here you go. You know, like, and like trying to like still like retain like some sort of control over like the way it was being developed. And like, that doesn't happen to me a lot. Like I just, I got like kind of like almost like possessive over it, which was weird. Um, I don't experience that very often. And, And we ended up recording it like once live like just like piano and vocals and uh that was going to be what went on the album and as you know you've heard the album now um we like we're getting ready to like send it off to mastering and I was like no I don't like this like we're gonna redo it so like we went back into the studio and like redid the whole thing and it, it came out obviously completely differently than we recorded it originally and it just it's so personal. Um, it's also like, I think in terms of production, some of 
some of the work that I'm I'm most proud of. Um, I think it's just I think it's beautiful. I also think it's kind of like a bop, but it kind of sneaks up on you and yeah. So that's my tune. That's it, my one. It sneaks up on you and then it just ends as well. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> so it, there's, there's a lot happening in it. Uh, yeah, it, for sure. It's a great swan song for uh, constellations. Uh, Thank really, you. Yeah. I mean, <laughs> truly the, um, the, the, uh, like the uh, track listing, the way you broke down from start to finish, like track one to what is it? 10 tracks, I think 11. Yeah. Um, I like, I don't know if there could have been a better way to, to really lay them out. Um, like again with a uh, woman, it's on, and I'm talking in terms of the vinyl, which I'm, you know, we'll show off here in a second. Um, it ends the A side and what mm-hmm. a hell of a song to end the A side. <laughs> oh my God. And then fried, of course, just, um, takes care of the rest so I'm so glad you feel that way because I have like lost sleep thinking about the track listing like and that does that's another thing that I haven't experienced before like just like deep deep concern about the order of the songs on the album and like I don't know maybe this is not the most relatable like I'm sure people care a lot about this in the album making world but I I was just like it felt like such a puzzle to me on this album where in like other albums, it just didn't feel that way. So I was like, very, um, I guess self-conscious would be the word choice about the selection of like what songs went where on this album. And and everyone ha- kind of has had like something to say about it. Like, oh, that's like an interesting order. And I'm like, what does that mean? Like interesting <laughs> how? <laughs> so um, I'm, I'm happy to hear you say that. <laughs> yeah, it's like, can you please expand on interesting, yeah. please? Can you use a different word <laughs> other than interesting? So um, I have a writer, uh, her name is Tyra Broods. And she uh, recently, actually today, and podcasting's weird because the time that people are listening to this versus when we're talking is very, right. very different. But you could check out a, a review that Tyra wrote on Constellations. It is out on our website, thespinningthoughts.com. And I think that Tyra did a fantastic job, actually, at pointing out kind of the ebb and flow of this album because it is sonically, and I mean this in a good way, all over the place like it goes from point a to like point c and then to point f and then it but it with fried when it just ends you feel yeah. like it you feel like it resolved even though it doesn't really resolve it, it it's going to be something that people have to listen to and kind of make a decision on on yeah. their own but the, the structure is really unique and that is just another calling point to clever girls and uh to constellations now the album is going to be released via egg hunt records this is a label that i uh, i actually posted a tiktok a few months ago about like record labels to be checking out and to show some love to and they were on it and I, so i'm that's kind of how i found you was because i like egg oh, wow. hunt. yeah so um how did you get linked up with egg hunt records and what's the dynamic been like working with them for the release of constellations Um, so it's funny. It's a funny story. So if you are at all, like in the world of DIY touring, you've probably had a number of these shows where you like are kind of playing in a place you've never played before. And it's like you, the bands that are on the bill and the person who booked the show in the room and like, that's it. And so we were playing a show like that, where it was just like at a record store, there weren't that many people there. Um, and I don't know, like we, we really try to have fun at like every show we play. Cause for us, like, that's what we like to do. We like to tour and, and we want to put on a good show and like, no matter what room we're in, no matter how many people are in the room, like we want to make sure we're having fun on stage. Like that's that. Um, and so it was one of those nights where like morale was like, I would say like a little bit low just because I think we had been on tour for a while and, and this this, that, and the other, you know, we were just like kind of exhausted, but we got on stage and we had like a really fun show. We like played probably way too loud. And like, I don't know, we were just kind of like rambunctious and whatever. And it turns out that Deanna had been doing A&R for Egg Hunt. And so she was the person who like put this show together. And I had no idea that she had been working with Egg Hunt, like didn't even really know about Egg Hunt as a label um until like a month later she emailed me and she was like hey like I put that show together I work with this label 
like, do you have any interest in working together? And this was like, after that, we had already been working on our album. We had already been in the studio and I was like, well, yeah, like, absolutely. And so since then, it's just been kind of like history and, and they have been just so awesome to work with. So supportive, so patient with everything that's been going on the last year. Um, and yeah, I mean, it really couldn't have been a better experience, you know, um, so to follow up then to make sure I'm understanding this correctly, because if I am, this yeah. is, this is pretty, this is pretty awesome. Uh, my takeaway from this is, so you're saying you're playing a show that maybe the turnout wasn't excellent and what the hell we would give for anything like that right now, just to play a right. show for one person or a hundred doesn't thousand doesn't matter at this point, we would take it. But from what it sounds like, you know, the turnout may not have been stellar. You still went out, put on a damn good show, had some energy, maybe tried, you know, a little loud, took some risks and whatnot. And you moved on with the tour a month later. All of a sudden, hey, I was the one who put on that show. I have, you know, an in with this label and here we are. I mean, is that correct? Yeah. Is that how it went? Yeah, that's exactly how it went. It was like, it's like, you know, you hear these stories about just like kind of being at the right place at the right time. And, and like, I, I don't know, I, I, I have always felt like there's no point in having a bad attitude on stage because even if you're not playing your best, like, I don't know, it sounds so lame and corny, but it's like, that's what we're there to do. So like, let's have fun and do it. And, and like people kind of, I don't know, like people kind of tease me about being like a little over enthusiastic sometimes. Like, I'm just like, just happy to be here, you know? Um, but it just like, for me, it was like, ah, oh, yes. Like this supports my whole thesis to life. Just like, have fun doing what you want to be doing and like be happy that you're there because I think truly, I think that's like what Deanna saw that night was just like a band that was like just happy to be playing a show and like happy to be playing music that we love and we care about. And it ended up working out that way. So it's amazing. It's one of yeah. the, the coolest, most inspirational things I've heard in uh, like this year so far of talking to artists. <laughs> God, I mean, thank you. I mean it be, because seriously, well, I've played in bands and, and, and obviously my bands have gone nowhere because I'm running a podcast. So I've played to many crowds like you're describing and it is hard. It is discouraging, especially if you're on tour and maybe you've hit a couple markets or venues where it's like that. But damn, is that really inspiring to just, you know what, go out there, have a good time give it your best shot and you never know who's paying attention and where it's going to go. It's the attitude that got you, you know, to where you are. So I, I just absolutely I think, love that. I think, and I, I, I think that, you know, we're lucky in the sense that like, we are all so close as a band that, you know, we're really able to feed off of each other in that way. And like, if somebody's down, there's usually somebody else who can bring you back up and, and, that I know is not something that every band has because like we've toured with other bands and I'm like, wow, like we just have like a really, really wonderful dynamic with each other. And it's something that I just don't, I don't take it for granted because I know that like not everybody has bandmates who can, you know, just like be that for, for them. So like, I don't know if I'm making sense, but, you're, but yeah, you're I'm, I'm lucky. Sense. We're lucky. Um, it's good. Yeah, I, I, I think that, I mean, at the end of the day, especially right now, it's a little bit different talking about being in a band because the touring aspect's not there, but it's going to be coming back and we'll, we'll be, you know, we'll be back to something here soon. There's got to be hope there around the corner, but I mean, it's, it's a family. It's a little cliche, but it's a family. There's going to be, you know, bumps in the road, but um, it, it's definitely, it's definitely interesting to see that dynamic and Clever Girls just pushes that dynamic forward. Um, for those who follow Spinning Thoughts, though, um, everybody knows that I'm obsessed with vinyl. I love vinyl records. Uh, this year's been extra crazy. I feel like bands are just tempting me with the stimulus checks and tempting oh, me. Yeah. You know what I mean? It's just, you know, I see I see the labels and the bands, you know, throwing in like, you know, stimmy money and stuff. I'm like, damn you, damn you. <laughs> But you know what? None of that actually happened um, in relation to me uh, snagging a copy of Constellations. Um, there's this blue variant, and I got to show it off. I've Very rarely, because I, I like to talk to bands and artists before an album drops. So very rarely do I physically have an album in my hand when I'm talking to the artist. So um, here I have Constellations. I think only 100 uh, of these were pressed in the mm -hmm. blue variant. I have been so stoked on it. Just came uh, the other day. I've been listening to it nonstop. Now, DJ, I'm under the impression this is sold out, correct? Yeah. 
Okay. Um, the, you can get this in black still. And I just found today, and um, part of me is like, Angelo, do you need to double buy on this? Um, I'm thinking about it because I see a neon yellow uh, one as well. Can you talk to me more about uh, this vinyl release? Is this the first time Clever Girls has released vinyl? And where can people get it if they want to be um, as cool as me? But again, the blue's out. But you can still be just as cool with black or <laughs> another one. Absolutely. So I'm really happy that you asked. So um, this is not our first time pressing vinyl because... When I, we made luck, I was actually working at Burlington Record Plant. We have a record manufacturing facility in Burlington. Um, and working there, I was able to kind of like afford to press our first album to vinyl, like at a, at a lower cost than, than what would normally be the case. So we were able to put luck on out on vinyl. All of those records are sold out. Um, and then with this record, um, we've done a couple different colorways. We've done the black, the blue, which was our limited edition release, um, 100 copies that sold out. And then we did another limited run of the neon yellow for indie exclusive through like Rough Trade and and these sorts of things. So um, that is also almost sold out. So if I know, I like can't believe I'm saying that. Like I know it's it's not that many records really, but. Um, I heard from our distrib distributor that the neon yellow is also almost sold out. So, wow. Um, if it is something that interests you, yeah, well, get listen. all the getting's good because the neon yellow is so beautiful. It looks so good. It does. It does look really good. And I very rarely, and I love records. I just very rarely double dip because in my mind, I'm like, yo, yeah. I'll just get another record, you know, from another band and whatnot. But yeah, that neon yellow is a very. I good actually, record. I could show you. Hold on one second. Do you, you mind? have it? Yeah, go, go. <laughs> Woo! <laughs> oh hell yeah! Okay, so, so um, as I said, like this record plant that we work with is in town, and um, they're the best. Like they're so ethical, and they locally source as much as they can and they recycle and, and all of this. And they're just like the best team ever. And I'm obsessed with them. Um, so they did our neon yellow. They did, they've done all our, our records, but they had to scrap a couple of the neon yellows. Cause when you're, you're pressing records every so often, there's just like a mistake that happens. You can't keep every record you make. So they made me <laughs> this planter. Wow. Yeah. I and they gave it that. to me as a gift. Cause um, cause they couldn't use this vinyl. So it's got, our, I, I know, isn't it cute? I love so that. This is the yellow and it's so good. That is vibrant as hell. Like that yeah. is so good looking and kudos, um, to all involved to repurpose that. Do you know what I mean? Like how cool is that? Vinyl repurposing is, is, is a thing and you can do it all is. kinds of cool stuff. Even, um, behind me, I separate my vinyl with like all the letters A through Z, um, by putting them on old records that are either cracked or just sound like crap or whatever it is, you know, so mm -hmm. repurposing, it's the way to go. I love it. I love it. So, okay. The, the black, uh, variant still available is that's on your band camp. Yes. I forgot to answer that part of the question. I, it's on our band camp. I tend to ask like seven questions in one question. It's to make sure you're paying attention and just to push you as an artist. So <laughs> you're, you're, you're doing great at it. Um, so it's on your band camp and I will make sure there's links. They're either scrolling in the video right now or whatever it may be. And um, name the um, where the yellow vi uh, variants. Um, well. So it's available as an indie exclusive uh, through rough rough trade. So, um, rough trade.com, I think is the website. Um, Perfect. and you might, you might be able to find it other places like online. I don't totally know, but like, I know you can get it there. <laughs> um, oh. and that's, that's where that is. And, and yeah, the, the yellow, all of, all of vinyl is beautiful. It all really of it's is beautiful. But it really the is. yellow is dope. <laughs> it absolutely is. Um, so if anybody else is getting this uh, record, you can make sure to hit us up on Spinning Thoughts on Twitter at Spin Thoughts. Let us know. Let us see it. And uh, we'd be down to check it out. So you were telling me that uh, now you were telling me that uh, off the air. So I'm excited to kind of talk about this a little bit here that there's going to be a full premiere early, a day early for Constellations. An outlet is going to be taking this on, giving it a full premiere. So 
I implore everybody while you're listening to this, if, if you're paying attention to spinning thoughts and you have notifications on, you're listening to this when we drop this and you haven't missed it yet. So go check out this premiere. Uh, DJ, where can everybody go and check this out on March the 25th? Yeah, it's going to be live on um, Gold Flake Paint, I believe. Yeah, on Thursday the 25th. And we're really excited. It's I love that that blog. I think they're they're amazing. So very excited about that. We'll get some links down below as well. Go check out the album early. And again, it will be available March the 26th via Egg Hunt Records. Now, uh, DJ, a lot of bands have been doing various things to support albums um, after its release uh, without touring and being able to play shows and things like that. Uh, talk to me more about what Clever Girls might be doing in support of pushing Constellations after it gets out there and it's in everybody's hands. Yeah, that's a really good question. I think if I'm being completely honest, we're still trying to figure that out. Um, obviously, we're going to be selling our merchandise, you know, like, so if you're a fan of the music, buying the records is like number one most important thing or like streaming the music on on Spotify or Apple Music or what have you. Um, but we are hoping to do like a ticketed live stream event um, and maybe like an in-person event up here in Vermont. Um, and other than that, we're still trying to like hash it out because I mean, our vision for this album was obviously to tour and, and run it into the ground, you know, play the songs till we couldn't. Um, and that doesn't seem like it's going to be happening. So with that in mind, we're, we're just going to kind of like adjust to what we will feasibly be able to do. Um, and yeah, so hopefully some live streams, um, hopefully maybe some limited capacity events in Vermont. Like we are so lucky up here to live in such like a, a socially conscious community where like our numbers are good and our vaccines are good. And, and, you know, people have really respected the pandemic and the gravity of the situation. So we're, we're lucky where like live stream or live events might be in our very near future, you know? Um, but yeah, I, I'm, I'm open to ideas, I guess. <laughs> You know, when I had future teens on last week for episode 213, I asked the crew uh, what they had planned for the release of their EP, Deliberately Alive, um, which is out now. Everybody should check it out. And, um, you know, it they they had no answer for it. And I almost like I almost like felt bad asking the question because I get it's a tough thing to even yeah. figure out right now. Like before, it's almost like you knew you knew what you were going to do. You Like you said, you're going to play these, you know, to the bone, basically, you know. Um, and, and now it's it, that's just not necessarily an option, at least not until deeper into 2021. Um, but the live streams have seemed to be, you know, be something that a lot of bands have leaned into. And I, I was talking to you off the air about your audio tree live performance was so epic. One of the better wow. ones I've seen. So um, clever girls Thank can translate you. very easily in, in many different mediums, I'm sure. <laughs> Thank um, you. Yeah, absolutely. Now. Let's see. Uh, it seems like the release of Constellations, as I was looking um, on your social media, there's buzz. There's a lot of buzz. There's a lot of publications talking about you, it seems. Um, there's a lot that are putting you on as like most anticipated for March or for 2021. Talk to me about this buzz. I mean, you and I kind of worked together to get this lined up. It seems like a lot of this like press that you're receiving is all grassroots or you or I, I don't know who your team is, but it's all really impressive. What's this looking like? Well, thank you so much for saying that. Um, I think so. I don't. So the buzz to me is like, I don't know. I have tried so, so hard to just separate myself from it because I think in the world and especially in indie music, like it is so easy to like get wrapped up in this mindset where you're like, wow, like if some dude at Pitchfork like doesn't like my album, it sucks, you know? And like, I'm just, I went through that already and I don't want to do it again. Like I don't, so like the press, I'm so thrilled that people are excited about it. I'm so thrilled that, you know, these, these awesome, really wonderful publications are, are taking the time and, and their energy to write about it. Um, but it's very separate from me. We do have somebody, it's not all grassroots. Like we do full disclosure. We do have like our team at egg hunt helping us do that stuff, but it has been in, in my best interest to just keep it at arm's length and, and be more separate from it just because 
um, I think so much of it is like, I don't know. I think so much of it can be, oh, I had like a really long conversation with a friend about this. I think a lot of it, like the press stuff, it can just be really hard on, on artists. And, um, and while we're so, so appreciative, I, I want it to be completely separate from the actual art that we make. So I tried, I try to keep it there. <laughs> That's really amazing. And I want to thank you, you know, for working with me then kind of personally on getting on the show because. Oh my uh, gosh, no worries at all. No, we, I mean, I've been following you on Twitter for like, I think almost a year, like six months. So yeah. I'm, I'm happy to do it. And, and yeah, I mean, it, it worked out great. So no, it, it definitely did. I totally get what you're saying though. Um, because I mean, art is coming from the soul and, and people are really mean and really brutal and they really only care about themselves. It seems a lot of the time. And, and they yeah. use artists to kind of just get to the end game that they're looking for. Um, oh my gosh, I like read a review today that constellations got, and like a year ago, this review would have sent me off the rails, like fully, like I would have been like devastated for a week. And it like, wasn't a bad review at all. Like this guy was basically just like, uh, like what, what it was, a very, it was like neutral, like, <laughs> you know, like it, was, it wasn't neutral, good, wasn't neutral, bad, just like neutral. And I was like, wow, like I'm way better than I was a year ago. Cause a year ago, like a neutral review would have like sent me into a downward spiral for two weeks. And like, I would have been so sad about it. And today I'm just like, oh, like whatever. <laughs> it's not for him. Like, yeah. <laughs> okay. <laughs> um, and I'm really happy to be in that spot, you know, and, and there's so much good music out there. Um, that isn't getting press and, you know, and, and that's a whole nother thing. Yeah. <laughs> like, I could talk about press forever. I really could. It's, it's a crazy, um, it's a crazy sphere of the music industry is, is the press. Yeah. Um, always you know grateful, like always great. I don't mean to sound like underappreciative. It's just, uh, I think, I think it's like, it's like scary to me. <laughs> no, I, I mean, Hey, I think that anybody listening can totally relate to that. Anybody who puts himself out there, I mean, geez, like, unless it's, even if it is something that's like, this is the most amazing thing I've ever heard. It's like, well, okay, are they just saying that to me because they want to be, like, there's, it's just for an artist, and I think so many right. people can relate. Yeah. It is really, it, it's hard to put yourself out there. And I think that Clever Girls, your lyrics, they are personal, you know, like they do tell, you know, a story at times, and and, and there's a lot to, you know, a lot to be nervous about with that, but a lot to take from your um, bravery sure, and putting it out there. Yeah, absolutely. And like the imposter syndrome just like runs real deep. So it's just like, yeah, it's always, it's always an interesting ride in the PR wave. <laughs> it is, it is. But from what I'm seeing, it's a lot of good stuff. And um, if anybody wants to read a good review, again, go check out Tyra's on our website, thespinningthoughts.com. Now, DJ, as we're winding down here in episode 214, I do want to touch briefly. I love talking about music videos. Uh, it's something that bands that I have been in, we just never got to that level. Um, I, I think that it, you know, it, it, it's hard to do them. You know, you have to be committed. You ha it takes money sometimes unless you're very creative and, and you yourself may be a videographer. But um, you sent me a link for uh, Remember Pluto, the, the music video for that. And we're probably going to have it playing here at some point for everybody to see. But um, I had heard the song multiple times from listening to the record and things like that. But wow, the visual for this just, um, it took me in a different direction. It, it felt like there was a lot of planning involved in this, uh, a lot going on. Can you talk to me more about this video shoot? Uh, a lot of red yarn. Um, what, were, what were you going for? Where was it shot? Things like that. Um, yeah, so the video we shot about... It was fall of 2019, right before the song came out. And uh, we sort of like wanted it to represent like a loose, a loose timeline was the idea. And like this timeline um, sort of held together, like the visual aid is, is the red string. Um, and the person who directed it, his name is Kale Cooper. He's just like visually, I think one of like the most talented um like one of the most talented people I know. He's done videos for and the kids. Um, he's done videos for Caroline Rose. Um, he's done all kinds of like amazing work for amazing artists who I really, really admire. And so he just so happens to be from Burlington. Um, and he's a friend of ours. And so he agreed to direct our video for us. And 
and it just came out so beautiful but i'm really convinced that like if you put him behind behind the camera like anything will look beautiful um so i i really feel like that's what happened we just happen to have like some really interesting stuff to work with like i at the time was living in this really old house from like the 1930s that had like a bunch of like weird stuff in it that's all over that video like that weird kitchen with the birthday cake and and yeah so there's that and then we were at the fairgrounds with the crown vic you might see like um and that is actually my partner's car um and so we just like wanted to use these this sort of like yeah like these like weird kind of compelling images and like this very new england fall um sort of picturesque uh thing to, to to kind of create this timeline and and um i'm really proud of that video i think it came out beautiful it did it, it really the value of music videos is you, you you know you get to be kind of trans transplanted into the artist's vision or realm or wherever they want you to be and i felt like wherever you were i was kind of there with you and um, I, I keep watching it and I keep catching like different things. Like I, I think the last time I watched it before I jumped on the call with you, I think I saw your um, jazz master hanging in the background at some yeah. point, um, which I had my eye caught its attention because I was watching your audio tree live performance where you were asked about your instruments. You were telling me about the faceplate or the, um, the pick guard. Sorry. Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. Right. Wh um, which is a, what a t-shirt or something. What is that? Yeah. It's like, so my friend Uris, he is like super crafty and he started making pick guards. And so he would take like, he used all upcycled materials. We're in Vermont. So like everyone's really big on like upcycling stuff, which is great. Um, and so he took like an old t-shirt and then like recycled plastic from like the bottom of a snowboard. Amazing. It looks really cool. That. And, um, you, anybody who's interested in knowing what we're talking about again, I'll probably have it up on the screen for a quick glimpse, but you could check this out. The audio tree live performance was amazing. Thank you. Um, so yeah, definitely Thank check that you. out everybody. Cause I've referenced it a few times, uh, for a reason. Now, DJ, I got uh, really one main last question for you before we wrap up. There's been a lot of, uh, even though it's been a tough uh, year and plus now at this point, feels like a decade, um, there's been a lot of good that's been going on, I think, in the music community as well. People coming together, um, different voices being heard, maybe um, after way too long of not being heard. What are your hopes for the music community in 2021, um, an industry that is still hurting? Uh, we don't know what touring is going to be like. Um, it seems like we may still have a long way to go, but overall... What are your hopes for the, the community? Um, for the music community as a whole, I hope that we just keep pushing forward these really important agendas that like I've seen a lot of people rally around, like the idea of uplifting voices that um, don't normally get the recognition that they need. Um, that goes for like Black, Indigenous, people of color. That goes for queer voices. That goes for the voices of women in our community. Um, and I just, I really hope that the time away from touring has kind of um, allowed people the, I guess, the space that they need to think about to like do better at cultivating like more diverse bills um, in every sense of the word and, and more, I guess, just like more thoughtfulness behind all of it. Um, because I think in general, um, and like, I, I think a lot of indie bands are, are, are guilty of this. Like we fall into these, these patterns of, of just being complacent. And so if the last year has taught me anything, it's like, that's not okay. And when you are complacent, bad, bad shit gets out of control. So, so I think that's my hope for the future is just to be very, very proactive and mindful and thoughtful about whose voices we're lifting up and how we're doing it. Totally agree. And, you know, I almost feel like with, with the vaccines and with live shows coming back, I mean, again, touring shows, it will be back. We have a chance as a music community to do it differently this time to do it right to lift others up and to be like you said proactive thoughtful about things like I, I really the way you explained it is, is is perfect like people 
have had the time in their own space to reflect on their own mm-hmm. biases or um problems. and i think like like the time to to educate ourselves better you know like if you haven't taken some time to like really really unpack uh, your own shit over the last year i mean i know like having time is also a privilege but i feel as though like the last year has really opened opened that door up for a lot of people and if it hasn't happened for you yet then like you know maybe slow down and make that happen because it's it's well past time but but yeah totally agree and um as long as we continue to do what we're doing and just lift up others and be kind and thoughtful as uh as you very eloquently said dj i think we'll at least start heading in a, in a better direction um so before we go is there anything else that you would like to add say anything that you might want to correct um that that i inevitably could have messed up uh or or um anything else that you'd like to just say to the listeners on um the release or where they should go to check you out um, definitely nothing I need to correct, but really just, just thank you for having me. Um, and to the listeners, uh, I hope you like the album, you know, um, it's really, really, really a labor of love. Like we all loved so hard <laughs> making this record and it was a lot of fun. It was a lot of work and yeah, it was, it was a lot of friendship and a lot of, uh, a lot of love that went into it. So I really hope that people can get that. And I really hope that people can, you know, take something, something good away from it. Absolutely. DJ, I want to thank you so much for being here in episode 214 of Spinning Thoughts. Awesome. Thank you. Once again, I want to thank DJ for being my guest here on episode 214 of Spinning Thoughts. Go and check out Constellations, the new album from Clever Girls. It is out March the 26th via Egg Hunt Records. There's vinyl, there's merch, there's streaming, and the album is just so, so good. Make sure you follow us on all social media at Spin Thoughts. Our website is thespinningthoughts.com, and we have premiere episodes every Thursday at midnight Eastern on Adobe Radio. We'll be back again soon. Until next time, make sure you share music, spread love. Spread love.